Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, I should probably say. Uh, welcome to today's live broadcast, quick live broadcast, where we're going to be looking at a bit of hardware today. So in a break from the usual tradition of just editing in Capture One, um, I thought it would be good to show you a different way of editing and using a piece of hardware. So let's dive straight in and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So on my desk, as you can see down here, uh, is the monogram creative panel. Now I do believe there's um, a rep from monogram also on the YouTube chat. Uh, so if you do have any questions um, specifically about the hardware, do drop them in the chat. I'll do my best to answer, but if uh, there is someone from monogram here as well, uh, then they can probably give you a bit more technical insight. Anyway, what is it? Well, it's basically a hardware input device. Uh, if any of you knew pallet gear some time ago, this is basically the version two of the pallet gear. Um, I used pallet gear for a little while myself, um, and without dwelling on the past too much, this is basically a re-engineered, much uh, better version of it. So you can see one of the panels down here, so it is modular. So basically, if I just pull this guy apart for a second, and hold this uh, one up here, and then just let focus come in for a second, then you can see. So they're basically modular panels that split up, stick together with magnets, which is pretty cool, and then can just snap together. So let's just pop that one back on the side, allow you to build various different configurations depending on the size of your desk, the space you have available, how many parts you need, and so on and so, so forth. Um, what I've done this morning is just play around with a few different profiles which you can make in the creator software. So I'm going to run through those. So I've got one relating to speed edit, one for just our normal editing, if you like, and also some really cool stuff that we can do if you shoot tethered as well, which uh, I was playing around with this morning. So let's dive into the creator software first of all. So let's make sure I don't cover anything up. I'll just hide the overhead for a second so we've got a bit more space. So it's a very simple application. <clears throat> Basically, what you see in the Monogram Creator app is how your hardware configuration is. So if I just snap in another device, then you see instantly it appears and then you can see uh, I'm just twiddling the dial here uh, underneath and then you can see exactly uh, what's going on. Now each of those dials, buttons, knobs and so on can then be bound to a particular action in Capture One. So I'm just going to go to our, let's start with something nice and simple that everyone can understand, which is just a simple editing uh, setup. Now before we go any further, I just mentioned that currently this is only compatible with Capture One on the Mac. Um, the reason for that is that Quite cleverly, what Monogram did is use our Apple script integration that we have in Capture One to, if you like, build a bridge uh, to the Monogram software. Uh, so currently it is only working on the Mac. Um, who knows what will happen in the future, but that depends on us a little bit, but currently it is Mac only. Just saw a question from uh, Laurie. So is this used in conjunction with the Wacom? Uh, it doesn't have to be, but it is uh, for me personally, but it doesn't have to be. If you're not a Wacom user, um, then uh, uh, that doesn't matter whatsoever. You can use this just with a, a simple mouse. So I've built this configuration, as you can see. Look, if I just open up my overhead camera again, so you can see the configuration I have on the desk is exactly as it is in the Monogram Creator software. So very simply, if you want to bind an action to one of the buttons, it's just a case of clicking on it like so. Oh, it's on my other monitor. Let's bring it across so you can see it. Clicking on uh, the button, so I just clicked on this highlight one here, and then essentially it shows you right here all the various different applications I can put on it. So if I wanted this to do film grain, I could click on here and say film grain impacts like so. And you see it uh, hits the button straight away. Uh, this one I had just to high dynamic range. So I'm gonna click that and grab highlight and it changes instantly. Now this big guy in the middle is quite interesting. So this is called the Orbiter. I'm gonna show you how it works quite nicely with uh, speed edit. It's actually a two part control. 
So let's just bring this up. So it's a control wheel around the outside, which you can spin quite nicely. And then it has like a touch sensitive pad, which is pretty cool, which we can bind to the color balance tool, which uh, we get to. But let's just look at a couple of simple things that I've done. Um, I won't go through every single thing. What I think is important to point out this brainy bit here, so that I'm pointing with my Wacom pen, that has two buttons on it and the brains, which you connect via USB. By default, they're set up to previous and next profile, which means if I just um, give ourselves a bit more space, kind of need two monitors for this. Uh, essentially what that means is when I tap this one, next profile, it changes the operation to a different profile. So this is my tethered capture profile. If I go back through, then this goes to my editing profile. And then if I go once more, this goes to my speed edit profile. So even if you don't have all the, the dials, modules and so on, you can actually pre-program them for different tasks and move through it quite quickly, which is really nice. Because if, you, if that was a slow, cumbersome process, then I think it would limit its operation quite heavily. So the fact that you can whiz through profiles is really nice. So this is my editing profile and you probably can't see it on the camera, but this shows the Capture One logo and the title of the profile. So I don't necessarily need to have this up on screen taking up space. I can see, okay, I'm on my editing profile. That's great. So now if we just grab a few buttons, so if I just twiddle the exposure slider, you can see that moving up and down, you get the idea. So very quickly, let's just um, reset this picture to nothing. So very quickly, I can just bump up the exposure. Let's open up the brightness, add some contrast, and then I'm gonna pull my highlights down and open up the shadows a touch and add some clarity. So you can see the sliders wiggling around on the left-hand side. But if you wanted to hide the interface, if you can remember where everything is, which you will do in time, then you can do quite nicely. Uh, and then I have this button as my next photo. So if I tap that, then that takes me to the next shot. Then I'm ready to, let's open up the brightness, pull the highlights down, open up my shadows and so on. So it's a really nice uh, speedy way to work. Um, also, I should point out the, the dials correct me if I'm wrong monogram, if that's not the right thing to call it. But if I do a push to click, so let's use this one, which is, so you can see exposure wiggling around on the left-hand side. If I just push to click, then it resets it to zero, which is super nice. If I press and hold, then it gives me like a um, accelerated adjustment. So it's coarser, if you like. A uh, question um, from, I saw, I can probably answer this one. We've got Michaela from Monogram, who's on the chat. So we've got Paul, one of our uh, Capture One ambassadors. Thanks for joining, Paul. What are the big changes from the original palette gear set up to the new Monogram product? That's actually a good question. I think, for me, the real estate is much smaller. Did I just, I did have some old palette stuff. So just to give you an example, so that's an old palette button, one, and that's the new monogram three, sorry, dial. This is a, a rotary dial. So you can see the space that it takes to have three palette buttons compared to a nice bank of one of three is much better for your space saving on the desk. Uh, the tactile or the response feels better, it just feels better quality, um, and it's a bit thinner and, and so on. So it's just, it's just, a better, more evolved product. Okay, um, let's talk about, let's just bring up the software so you can see. So here's my editing one. A couple of other functions you can see there, I had a previous photo and next photo. So if we were in uh, Capture One, so previous photo, next photo, this one toggles green. So if you look like in the bottom, just under me, just down there, then you can see I can toggle green on and off like so. Uh, so that's kind of nice for a, a culling workflow as well, works really nicely. I've set up the orbiter in this case to be the angle. So you see as I just twiddle the out, outside, it's just moving the angle ever so slightly, which is really nice if you're doing a quick edit and you just wanna tweak uh, the rotation by a small amount. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, Let's go back into the software again, and let's talk about speed edit. So what I'm gonna do is just break off this bit, 
and you see it disappears. I'm going to break off that bit. And if you wanted to, you could have just a little super compact module like this, which works really well for speed edit. But I'm going to add in that guy just to give me a bit of extra um, speed as well for using speed edit. So I've got my next previous and my toggle green like so. So how does this work with speed edit? Well, what I've done is just set the orbiter over here just to mimic left and right. Now, if you don't know what speed edit is and wondering what the heck I'm talking about, uh, speed edit is a new functionality in Capture 121 which uses keyboard shortcuts uh, and your mouse or Wacom or trackpad to move the sliders. So if I was to hold down Q on my keyboard, so you see at the bottom of my display, it now shows exposure. And if I was to drag anywhere on the image, like a big giant virtual slider, then I can edit without actually having to look at the interface. So now if I press and hold W on my keyboard, it's just out of shot, that gives me contrast and so on. So that is speed edit in a nutshell. It works with a Wacom, works with scrolling on a mouse, works with scrolling on a trackpad in the same way. But with the Orbiter, this is a super nice way to use speed edit. So once again, if I'm, I'm just gonna budge my keyboard across so you can see I'm running out of screen desk space. So I've got Q for exposure. So if I press and hold that and just spin the speeder, the orbiter wheel, then I can do my speed edit. So I'm gonna, let's just reset that shot. So I'm gonna just open up the exposure a bit. Let's just add a bit of contrast and just open up the brightness slightly. Now I wanna pull down my highlights and also open up the shadows a tiny bit as well, like so. So it's a really nice tactile way to work, as I hope you can see. And then when I'm done with that photo, I can click this guy right just on the edge of your screen, which will take me to the next shot, next shot, and so on. And then this one, let's just open up exposure and pull down the highlights a little bit. So just by spinning the wheel, then I'm moving that slider really nicely. Works brilliantly. Good question from Wayne. It says, do you have to hover over the image or have focus to the image in order for the speed edit keys to work? No, as long as Capture One is in focus, as soon as I press and hold my speed edit key, like so, you can see exposure change at the bottom, or if I press uh, Z, I've got clarity and so on. Um, the speed edit keys you can change, just so you know, if I go to edit keyboard shortcuts, there's all the speed edit keys and their functionality. So really, really nice. All right, so that's just a, a great way to do speed, speed edit. And as I said, I use the middle button just to toggle on and off like so. I don't know if you can see, you can probably just about make out on the overhead camera that the modules have little ring lights around them, LED lights and so on and you can change the color of that. So if I click on toggle green, I can also pick any of the colors down here, like so. So if I pull that, you can see it changes color if we go back to green and so on. So there really is a huge amount of flexibility in building uh, the interface that you want. Uh, Ruben, that's a good question. And says, does it work with the Logitech Craft keyboard wheel? I assume you mean speed edit, but if you can set the wheel to do right key, left cursor key, then I don't see any reason why you couldn't use it in combination uh, than this as well. Uh, Paul says, so what do you prefer? One dial per slider or speed edit shortcuts and the orbiter? Oh, good question. Um, I don't know, you know. I think there's so many different ways now that we can interact with Capture One. It opens it up for all different possibilities. But that reminds me, of a functionality which I wanted to show you. So I'm just going to throw this in. Let's go back to my editing profile. Sorry, wrong way, David. Uh, my editing profile, because I stumbled across a functionality which was quite interesting. Because you can buy more of these, like I have a kit called the Creator Console, which includes this. But obviously, you can buy more individual pieces to build the kit you want. But if you want to make one of these rotary dials universal, there's actually a really neat trick. So if I go to clarity amount, let's just change this one, see if I can remember where to find it. Um, adjust any slider. So this is kind of neat. So if I say adjust any slider, 
hover over a Capture One adjustment slider with your mouse, turn the dial to adjust the value. So let's do that. So now if I uh, hover with my mouse on exposure and just twiddle this, oh, there was this one, wasn't it? Did I get it wrong? I did it, adjust any slider, so it should work. Oh, maybe it didn't, what have I done in this case? It was working beautifully this morning, so that's probably something I'm doing wrong. But I did find, uh, as I was trying earlier, it did work great that you could simply hover over any slider and then twiddle with it, uh, the adjustment, and then it would work super nicely. So that's probably something I'm doing wrong, so I'll take a look at that. But that fu functionality is really useful if you don't want to use uh, every single dial. So. Um, Going back to this guy, the orbiter, because we spoke about the ring on the outside, but we didn't speak about this pad in the middle. So this can be interesting to bind it to the color balance tool. So if we just bring open the color balance tool for a second, let's just pop this guy up on screen and then you'll see, let's just go to, let's pick up shadows. Now, ideally you want three of these because then you could really exercise what the color balance tool is doing. So let's just peep color balance tool under there. Let's click on this one. And then what we're gonna do is change. Uh, let's go to color balance, color balance like so. And what did I pull out? Shadow. So let's just say uh, shadow, Ooh, sorry. So you can tell I'm uh, new to this one. Uh, presets, that's what I want. Sorry, I was on customize, which gives you even more uh, potential. So I wanna go to color balance and I said shadow. So let's say done like now. So now this middle bit uh, interacts with the color grading of the color balance tool, which is super nice. So you'll see as I just use the pressure sensitivity, then I can move my color grading or color balance wherever I want by moving around the wheel, which is pretty nice. So it's an alternative to like a trackball. Um, depending what you would favor ergonomically, then I think it's worth trying out both different systems. But without too much practice, it's quite nice to just be able to skip around, if you like, the color balance and pull out the um, tone that you want to have. And then on the right hand side, the orbiter as you can see, becomes the luminosity slider, like so. So tons of um, potential really for um, pretty much calling on any option in Capture One. Uh, you can also mimic hotkeys as well. So any hotkey you can pull out. So if you've done any customized shortcuts, you can uh, bind those to the buttons as well. Um, but as you can see, just from the, the list when you go into any of the functionality, you can see there is quite a great deal. Okay, I'm gonna show you a really nice feature for Tethered in a second, but I'm just gonna see if there's any other questions, and let's see. Um, let's have a look. Ha, Pete says you should do one of these demos with Logic Pro, yeah. It's not only, of course, that that monogram works with Capture One. You can also program it for, with the Finder. I, you know, I've been using this to turn the volume up and down, which is super nice. So there's lots of other applications that you can use it for, and of course, make uh, different profiles. And I should point out, you can also save your profiles as well and upload your profiles and share them to others' users too, which is pretty pretty cool. All right, I want to show you something with Tethered. So let me, I'm just gonna close down this because I've got just a basic tethered setup going on. So I'm gonna make a new session. Uh, let's just call this monogram like so and say, okay. Let's just pop away the color balance tool. I've got a Nikon just loaded up. So let's plug this guy in. Lots of stuff getting plugged in today like so okay so there's our nikon live let's just hide this for a second uh, so it's just a nikon d800e um, but if you didn't know if we just call open live view for a second so you can just see over my shoulder over there you can just see the little leica setup going on so in live view 
if you didn't know, you have the ability to control the focus of the camera, which is pretty nice. So you can press these buttons to jog the focus backwards and forwards. But it's, it's a little bit clumsy to do because you kind of have to make sure that you're looking at the arrows at the right hand time and you also want to be looking at the photo. So let's just come out of live view for a second. Go back to monogram creator and I've got here this tethered setup as well. Now the way I'd set this up is um, let's we can probably program it as we speak. I thought I had them um, already set up. Oh, there we go. That's good. Just needed to snap them together. So what I've done is set these dials for focusing and we've got a capture button, a toggle live view and a toggle green again for tagging and rating. Let's just chuck in a bit more light behind me. So let's just do that brighten it up a little bit in the background and see what we can do. So first of all, capture, toggle live view, toggle green. So if I tap my middle button, so this one here, like so, live view opens, super nice. If I tap it again, live view goes away, great. So um, yes, you can do that with the shortcut key, but it's just really nice to be able to tap, oh, live views on the other screen, come over here, live view, like so, and then we get my live view popping up. Now, if I double click to 100%, then we get the full 100% view uh, in Capture One's live view window. Now, this is a D800E, so it's quite an old camera, so it doesn't have the bestest live view ever. But what it does mean is that to get critical focus, I can then use these dials. Now, before I twiddle them, remember up here we had focus coarse, focus medium, focus fine, like so. So now, if I go for the, the end dial, and turn it, then you see we get a coarse ramping of the focus like so. So if I roughly get it in the right spot, now I can move to my middle dial, which is like a medium focus. And then if I want to be really fine, then I can just tweak that dial and get my focus absolutely spot on, which is much better than trying to touch the camera because the camera just bounces around all over the place. If you're trying to focus, I can just about reach it. I'm probably going to go out the shot. But as soon as I touch the camera, it becomes very difficult to focus it accurately because it's just moving around all the time. So this makes it much more fluid and easier to get the focus in the right spot, like so. And then now when I'm happy with that, I can tap the middle button again to get rid of live view. And then if you remember, in the creator, we had this button. The first one here is my capture button. So if I press capture, then God knows what the exposure is like. Actually, it could be worse. And then we get the uh, the photo up on screen like so. So again, just a really nice addition. Let's do a open up the exposure a little bit. Do another capture. That's a bit better. And of course, if I need to go back into my live view to adjust, I can do so. Um, there is also, you can program a button to zoom one-to-one. -one. So if I wanted to automate that as well, I could do so. Tweak my focus very nicely. So much better than clicking buttons and, and adjusting the camera itself, especially if you can't reach the camera, if it's buried in, in a set somewhere. Middle one, hide live view, make a capture, easy peasy. Okay, that's my best one. Let's just hide me for a second. So now I can press the uh, M button to tag that one green. Happy days. You know, nice little simple workflow of moving through like so, also with tethered capture. So that's really just scratching the surface of, of what's possible with the various different tools in Capture One. So it's very easy to set up. Oh, let's hide the overhead so we can see what's going on. Very easy to set up, nice and easy to move through those different profiles just with a, a, a click of a button. So I could go from my tethered capture setup to my editing setup with just hitting that profile button, do some edits, go back to my tethered capture, instantly all the functionality changes and so on and so forth. So my advice if you are gonna jump on this and set this up is having these two buttons as your previous and next profile really helps you to move uh, through it swiftly. Cool. All right. If there's any other questions, 
fire them in the chat, either on YouTube or Facebook or forever. Hold your peace.